One of the most common mistakes made by novice physics students in the lab is getting confused about how to measure voltage and current. Back in the old days, these were measured by different devices, an ammeter and a voltmeter. But nowadays, we measure them all with a digital multimeter. And people don't often realize that they have to be careful about where they put their voltmeter or ammeter to measure things properly. So let's talk about that a bit. Let's say we've got a battery, get a resistor over here, and another resistor over here. It gets a bit more complicated than have a third resistor over there. Now let's say we want to measure the current going through there. And we have our nice digital meter, which has two leads. Now the way digital meters work is if you, they're set to current mode, so you set them to measure the current, they have a very low internal resistance. So you might think what you would do is put one lead behind the resistor in question and one in front of it. So you're trying to measure the current through that resistor. But what's going to happen here? Because the resistance in here is so low, the current has a chance. It can go through this resistance here or it can bypass it, which has much less resistance. Which way will it take? It'll take the easy path, of course. So all the current will go through here, probably burning out your multimeter. No current will go through here. So sure, you've measured a current, but the current is very different because you've disturbed your system. Your system has now changed um, because you've basically got rid of a resistance. So it's equivalent to having just something like this. So if that doesn't work, what can you do? Now what you need to do is move your leads. Let's get this back to how it's supposed to look. What you need to do is actually break the circuit in series to whatever you're trying to measure. So in this case, let's break the circuit here. We could break it over the side as well, but we'll break it up upwards. So you've got a break, break in the circuit, and then you connect your leads up to either side of the break. In this case, the current will indeed go through your multimeter and won't be affected very much because it's got such a low resistance but it then has to go through the resistor as before so in this case the current won't be much changed so you are actually measuring what the current would have been had your multimeter not been there which is what you generally want so the general rule if you want to measure current Put your multimeter in series. Break the circuit and put it in front or behind of wherever you actually want to measure things and see how much electricity goes through. That's current. How about voltage? So let's say we now turn this to measure voltage. And let's say we want to measure it across the same resistor. How are we going to do it now? So let's rub things out again. Put the circuit back in place. To measure voltage, the way a multimeter works is it has a very large resistance inside. Um, so only a very small amount of current will come through. And by looking at that very small amount of current and using Ohm's law, the multimeter can work out your voltage. So how are we going to do that? In this case, you need to put your leads across whatever you're trying to measure. Say one in front and one behind, like we did originally and wrongly for measuring current. In this case, the current's going to come along here. It can either go this route, which now has a very high resistance, or it can go that route, which has a lower resistance. It will by and large choose this route. So the current won't be changed very much. So you should be measuring what the potential difference across the resistor would be if there weren't, if your multimeter wasn't there, which is what you're after. So to measure voltage, you put your multimeter in parallel. 